so finally, in uh, .NYC this week, we have a lot of fun. Andrew McWilliams from ThoughtWorks, come on up, Andrew, uh, is uh, a work being the theme of the day, works at an unusual company in which you can un do unusual things. So tell us first about ThoughtWorks and then what you're doing there, and then you'll introduce us to your friends. Great. Well, ThoughtWorks is a 4,000-member software consultancy. Um, we're global. We have offices around the world, and we, we're kind of cross-sector. So we work with retail, finance. Um, we're kind of more interested in how you can apply technology in multiple areas and maintain consistent approaches to how you deal with it. Um, and then so the programs that we've been running out of New York recently are somewhere at the intersection of arts and technology. So... Um, what surprised Annie, uh, our, our producer, our wonderful producer, said that she was really surprised that you could bring these unusual things into a what would seem to be a stiff shirt consulting company. Right? Right, Why right. is that of interest to them? Why, what, what does the company get out of this? Well, the way we think of it, it kind of stems from the idea of arts practice as a form of technology research. So the idea behind that is, I mean, I guess actually where that comes from with me personally is that my arts practice, I've been making technology-driven artworks for about five years. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I was trained as and worked as a software engineer. And I recognized that there was a lot of crossover and there were things that could be learned and brought from one to the other. Um, in particular, I'd like to think about how design and engineering often revolve around problem solving. So you need to be able to define a problem space and understand it just enough uh, to be able to get started in some form of making. Now, what happens with arts often is that you don't necessarily need that foundation before you begin. You can move in a kind of what my colleagues would call an unconstrained way in that you can um, have like an open-ended exploration. You can follow based on your instinct. You're open to serendipity. You can make large conceptual leaps, and that's actually a good thing. Whereas if you were problem-solving, it might be a diversion from the problem you were trying to solve. So, uh, in these art projects, you've run across some really, really interesting people, and you brought uh, two friends here today. You I want have. to introduce them and what they do, and come on up. Well, so, the microphones are getting set up, but... Well, to <laughs> let you know about the program, Please this, there's several programs that we run, but this particular one is a residency program in which we invite artists to spend 16 weeks with us. Okay. Um, during that time, we help them with their projects, and um, in particular, we're interested in artists who are using technology as a medium. Um, our first residents are Neil Harbison and Moon Rebus. These guys are interested in cyborgism and developing new body parts and new senses. You guys want to come on up? Hello. Hi. Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming in. This, this is great. Come on, come on around. Um, I guess we, we're missing a chair, I guess, so you'll stand there. Thank you. For, <laughs> for being there. We're still figuring this out. Uh, uh, why don't you both explain how you're cyborgian and... and, and, and um, in what way and, and how long you've been doing this and, and how this affects art and work? Um, I have an antenna implant that allows me to extend my perception of vision. It includes infrared and ultraviolet perception. There's also internet connection so people can send colors to my head. So it allows me to sense color through vibrations in my skull. So it's a new sensory organ that gives me a, a new sense and it allows me to go beyond the visual spectrum. Yeah, and I have an implant in my arm that allows me to perceive earthquakes in real time anywhere in the planet. Oh, anywhere in the planet. Oh. Yeah. So I, I call it the seismic sense. So now I'm connected to the movement of the Earth. So I want to geek out all kinds of questions here, but <laughs> let's stay at the high level for a minute. Um, how does that affect you being for 16 weeks at ThoughtWorks? What, 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 what kind of connections do you guys see to, to Andrew's company? Yeah, we want to develop further our senses, but uh, um, in ThoughtWorks, I would like to, to connect to the seismic activity on the moon. So this, uh, because if we use internet as a sense, we can perceive things that are happening very far from ourselves, like in the other side of the planet, or even space. So we want, so I want to be here, and this, to perceive mooncakes will allow me to be here in the space at the same time. And I'll be developing a new sense, uh, a new sensory organ that will probably be around my, my head, it will be like a, a crown, uh, a head clock. It will allow me to feel time. We all have a sense of time, but um, this would allow me to control my sense of time. So if I wear this head clock for several months, which will allow me to feel what time it is, uh, it will give me a perfect sense of time. But if I wear it for even longer time, it might become my biological clock. 
if it becomes my biological clock, I'll be able to control my perception of time. So if I want time to feel longer or, slow, or slower, I can modify it so that it moves slower or faster. Or if I move it back several times, it will feel like I'm traveling in time. So it's taking into practice uh, Einstein's relativity of time theory into a, a new sensory organ. So time is still circular, not linear in that case. Yes, so it's the position of, of the sun with the planet. It's, uh, ah. That's how time is, uh, for me, more uh, objective. So it's the position we are in relation to the sun. So if uh, 12, 12, 6 and 6, 24 hours for a whole, whole circle of the planet. So it's, it's circular because the planet is circulating it. Describe a little more the sensations you get from the color sensor. Uh, uh, how, how does it work in terms of, 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 of informing, because you're colorblind? Each color is a light frequency, so it light. creates a light frequency. This picks up the light frequency and gives me a vibration in the skull. So each color has its own vibration that becomes a sound. So I actually hear the frequencies of color. If we could hear the frequency of red, we would hear a note between F and F sharp. So it's not an arbitrary relationship between color and sound. It's the actual uh, fi frequency of the, of the light. The advantage of sensing color through a new organ means that I can go beyond the visual spectrum, so it includes infrared and ultraviolet. And the internet connection is a second implant that allows me to receive colors from other parts of the world. So I have fr five friends that have permission to send colors to my head. They can send colors any time of the day or <laughs> night. So if they send, there's a beautiful sunset in Australia, my friends can stream live images from a mobile phone to my head so I can sense a sunset. Or if they send colors at night, then they sometimes blend with my dreams. So if I, someone sends violet colors at night and I dream of violet houses, they are influencing my dreams, so they can be part of it. So it's a way of sharing a sense and using the internet as a sense, not a tool, and also a sensory extension that allows us to separate our body from our senses. Also, I can connect to satellites because the internet connection allows me to connect to NASA's International Station's live stream. So this then allows me to sense colors from space. So uh, it's the use of the internet as well to explore space. So instead of physically going to space, you can send your senses to space and explore uh, the outer, outer space through uh, sensory extensions. So we feel like sense thrown out, so mind thrown out, sending your mind to space instead of your body. Do you have a favorite color? Infrared is my favorite color. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can see it, we can't. Because it's the one that uh, is uh, more unexpected, infrared. I can expect that this is red, uh, the heart, uh, so many things you can expect, but infrared is always uh, unexpected and it has a very profound sound. It's very deep, very low frequency, very peaceful. So that's why I like it, because it's peaceful flow. I've got to geek out for a second. Replacement parts. How do you deal with upgrades? We keep upgrading. You yes. do keep upgrading? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you take out this, the, 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 under, the, uh, the subdermal sensor? Yeah, before implanted, it was already evolving, and mm -hmm. it still has to evolve. Now I want to perceive it on, on my feet. I think it fits more natural, and also at location. So, yeah, the good thing about becoming a cyborg is that your senses uh, are evolving and, and, comes and it gets better during time. So we're looking forward to get old, because our senses will get better. Ah. So, yeah, if you unite yourself with technology, Technology keeps evolving and it evolves mm. faster than our biology. So if you become technology, you can evolve with technology. So we are expecting to open and close our body several times during our lifetime in order to upgrade our senses and body parts. Do they crash? No. no. <laughs> I, I, I see a blue screen of death joke here somewhere, but I... <laughs> oh, it's that tone. I know it's broken now. But sometimes uh, internet connection does fail, but not the cheap so the chip's still worse, but internet connection is not always, sometimes it is intermittent, so. So we, I, I saw, what is it, I saw another thing the other day about, about all these efforts to say, we have to go to offline, we have to, we have to stop and, 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 and turn off technology, and I get rather tired of that, is my prejudice, just to be clear here. But you living with this all the time, do you ever have a desire to turn it off? No, because no, it's, it's become part of, of our identity and our who we are and our perception. So it's, yeah. For yeah. you, since you hear, since you feel the seismic waves happening all over the world, does it ever surprise you? Like when you're sleeping, do you are, are you awaken uh, when 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 there might be like 
activity happening someplace. Yeah, at the beginning I had to get used to to these constant vibrations. But now, yeah, and if there was a big one, I would wake up. But now it's, it's yeah, I feel like it's another heartbeat. Like I feel like I have two heartbeats, my own and then the earth beat That's having cool. its own rhythm. Mm. It, it seems like you're emphasizing art and life over technology, using technology in the service of, of those things. Be we see yeah. this as art. So this is yeah. uh, creating your own senses is an art, creating your own body parts is an art, modifying your perception of reality is an art, in the same way that a sculpture will use a piece of stone to modify a piece of stone and create a sculpture, we modify our brain. So the brain is our sculpture, the body as well is our sculpture, and this is our main artwork. So the creation of these new senses is cyborg art then we choose whether or not to reveal this art to the audience by creating external artwork. So our art is revelatory. It reveals an experience that we are uh, experiencing, a new sense, but uh, we choose to reveal it or not. It's like a, taking a picture. You take a picture and then you decide whether or not you want to develop that picture, but the art is the action of taking the picture. For us, the art is the action of feeling these uh, new senses that we've created, and then we do reveal it through external artworks. And so you're not into technology, but we're geeky here. So I, I, I can't help asking, uh, what kinds of other implants did you imagine that other people, would, would you recommend to other people that wish you wish someone would create? Um, uh, not necessarily for yourself even, but just, just having lived with this notion of having changing your senses with technology that's implanted. What are the frontiers for that? Yeah, we, we like to get inspired by animals and nature. and. Because if we would perceive things uh, like other animals perceive, our the, our understanding of or perception of the planet would really change. So we, I think, we like senses that can that we that help us to understand better where we live and also travel to space. So we be senses related to space and nature. Yeah, we're actually launching a company this week called Cyborg Nest that will be. Uh, uh, having senses available for other people and oh. the first one we are uh, launching is the north sense so that you can have it implanted or semi-implanted and it vibrates whenever you face north so it gives you the sense That's of cool. north. That is very cool. <laughs> other species have this like pigeons can sense the north or sharks, sharks can sense the north. Sensing north gives you a sense of orientation so if you have this for several weeks or months it will eventually give you a, a new sense and then there'll be several more senses that will be launching for the next years because there's yeah there's so many senses that we could add. Go ahead. I was gonna say are you, are you oh, would are I get you, this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty good at directions but, but, <laughs> but you know I think Nan would need to get it first because we don't ask for directions um, and, and well just to play it further I'm probably worse with directions now thanks to Google. Yeah I would say it's right I mean I, I'm very dependent upon ways. Yeah but Google gives you um, artificial intelligence we this is giving you artificial senses yes. which is the difference uh, AI you don't need to think with AS your brain needs to figure out the sense and then the intelligence is created by your brain not by mm -hmm. the technology and we're really interested in AS more than AI because then the intelligence created by the new sense is unique to each person and it's uh, created by your brain, so it lasts. So, so Christina, are you gonna get one? No. No? <laughs> no, but I, but I love the idea. I love the idea. I think it's it's super fascinating. I, I don't know if I would want something implanted. I in might me, do but it. I, but I love the idea. So give us the geeky details. Uh, uh, how, how do you get it implanted? What does it cost? Uh, how does it keep power? What do you feel when it's north? Actually, the first one is semi-implanted, so it's mm. for people that because we thought there's many people that are interested, but not okay, we've so not maybe, okay, okay. So right, right. it's a, it's a <laughs> implanted. So it, and it can be probably here or anywhere else in the body that you want to have it. And it's simply you it don't need a mobile great. phone either. It's just uh, very simply. It's, it's like a an compass, a cheap compass that vibrates whenever you face north. A battery in it needed. That's part of the, That's the external. Yeah, you can charge yourself. So <laughs> it's permanently <laughs> semi planet, So, but you charge yourself, yes. What is it going to cost? We do it as cheap as it's possible. So, uh, I think it's 300 dollars more or less. And and I mean. and who installs it? There'll be a, a, a network of body hackers or piercers that will will give this service. Wow. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. That's cool. I that's like that. Cool. Yeah, we can like we can have we can do that on the show. We could. Okay. 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 Good. You volunteered for us. Let's go. <laughs> what what other body hacks?
fascinate you? Uh, there's so many senses we could add. Like, for mm. example, sensing what's behind you, retroception, mm. with mm. simple, uh, even earrings that vibrate whenever right. there's presence behind you. Moon had these for several years. So if someone was behind her, she could feel a vibration. So it gives you a sense of ah. what's behind you. So all our senses seem to be focused on what's in front of us. Adding a small earrings that vibrate whenever there's presence behind you gives you a, a wider perspective mm. of, of your surroundings. Because, um, Moon, you're, yours being global, it, 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 it just strikes me that, that I like something in my environment and that it helps <laughs> me with my environment. But to have something that is that much out of your control, mm. there's no control whatsoever, right? It's, it's, it's something that nature is doing halfway around the world. That's, that's more difficult to me. Um, it's not to me. For me, it's what... Uh, some, so many people think they're very interested in communication with people. And this, for me, it's... Uh, for me, that's the difficult part. When it's something connected to something that is so natural, it, it fulfills me, just the idea. And also... I'm, I'm a choreographer, so I wanted to perceive mm. movement in a deeper way. And I thought okay. this movement that is so natural and has always been there, and we still and it's and we still don't know how to live with it. I think, yeah, I think I, I thought it would it would be amazing to be connected to this. And you feel it, the intensity varies based on the Richter scale measure. Or, yeah. Yes. So when when it happens, when you get a fairly intense notification. Hmm. Do you go running to the news wondering where this is? Yeah, there's a big one, yeah. Yeah, but usually, I mean, not always that there's a big one means that there's a disaster. There's so many, right. there's so many. 99% of the earthquakes are not harming anyone. So what's the sense of trepidation that you get when you get the, the notification? The sense of? Trepidation, of, 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 of worry, of concern that, uh-oh, is this a disaster or is this just... A little uh, bit of movement. Um, I think less and less. less because, because sometimes so there's, there's a... Uh, not, not always that it's a big one means a disaster. And yeah, it's it, most of the vibrations are harmless. So it's... it's I, I, I worry sometimes, but not so often. And then when I... I am actually... This year I want to launch also a, a, a charity. So that my, the money that I get from the performance can help to prevent and to recover it fast. So. so Andrew, back to you. What do your colleagues get from this interaction? I mean, you're in a creative environment, you're a problem-solving environment, I get that. Yeah. But try to get a little more specific about, about uh, you introduce Neil and Moon to your colleagues. Yeah. They go through, the, I, I, thank you for going through You know <laughs> the things that you go through all the time. Then what happens? Well, that's the question. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know yet. So okay. yesterday was the first time that this introduction happened ah. globally. So we had two calls to satisfy both sides of the world because uh, we have offices around the globe. And on those calls, Neil and Moon gave a presentation about the, you know, the senses they've already created, the senses they would like to create during the residency. And we had an appeal to say, okay, if you're interested in this, whatever your skill set or background, um, if you would like to help the residents, then drop us a line. And we've had a bunch of uh, interest, and so we're going to figure that out over the next 16 weeks. We're just kicking this off. Have you done this? Is, this is the first, the first project like this you've done? The first iteration of it. So right. we've done other programs that are like public programs that are at the intersection of arts and technology, but those typically involve um, incubating artists in the evening or the weekend, and they're not quite as close to the core of the company. We learn a little about emerging technologies, we discuss it, and then we move on. With this one, it's a little closer because we're actually inviting people to stay with us for a longer period of time. And it's a little bit different to kind of traditional arts residencies. Often when you think of an arts residency, it's a location that you go to that's more of a retreat and you're kind of left alone and you have time to focus and work on your arts practice. Um, what's a slightly different unique selling point of doing it in the context of a technology company is that you have access to a network of engineers and designers and analysts and so on. So we're gonna figure that out. The answer is we don't know yet. And, and Mona and Neil. What do you hope to get from the technologists? Besides your own project, but what, what is this intermingling going to get you? Well, always when, when there's a team and there's people around the project, there's always uh, new ideas come out and better ways of doing things appear. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to, to be surrounded with creative people and people who know about tech and people who are passionate about all this. So we also, mm -hmm. yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. We also, we don't know what's going to happen. Well, that's, that's the best <laughs> stuff. 
Well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for coming in. I really appreciate it. Good luck with uh, the projects and thank the next you. implants, whatever they may thank be. You. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Um,